Hello and welcome to Clamp, the creating, living, and making podcast. I'm your host, The Grant Alexander, and joining me as always is Morley Kurt. Crotch fully out of view. And Adam Mackey. <laughs> Hello. Adam, <laughs> what have you been up to this week? Because I don't want to talk to the crotch. <laughs> um, well, my wife and I have finally got our business pretty much ready to go. Um so I think last week I talked about we registered our business number. This week we have actually bought our business name, which is pretty exciting. Mm. Um, so everything is now good to go. Got a business banking account and everything, and and yeah, so like ready, pretty much ready to go. Just got to make a website and and that sort of stuff. Um, cool. But on the maker side, well, not maker side, but the YouTube side, I put out a new video on how to tram your CNC, which. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of the first videos I've had that has kind of blown up in a sense, not <laughs> not views wise, but like I put out the video, uh, was it like six days ago? And I've gained almost 50 subscribers from the one video, which mm. for me is pretty insane. I, I usually get like maybe one or two if I'm lucky. So How many views is that? Uh, I'm not sure. I can tell you. While you're checking, when you say you bought your business name, so what exactly does that mean? Because does that mean you bought the trademark or you registered the name? So so it's not necessarily a trademark. Like someone else could use the name in another um, business, if that makes sense. Like the, like it, we're doing like the DIY thing, like the um, wood custom wood products and stuff. But someone could like make a football team that's called the same thing. Or mm. something like if it's a different industry and stuff, so it's not trademarked in that sense. But um, you must, you have to pay to register your business name if you want to, like pay taxes and all that sort of stuff. Gotcha. Oh, interesting. Do. Well, not want to in, have to. <laughs> in in taxes. Canada, you can just register the number, the business number, and then yep. you can operate as, and you don't actually have to pay for the operating as. Yeah. Right. So you'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, operating as the Grant Alexander. Yeah. Well, so you don't have to register your business name until you make over a certain amount of money because oh, it's considered okay, yes. like a hobby. But as thirty seven dollars for the year, I'm like, let's just let's just do it. it let's make it more right. official. I've always like I like one of my biggest dreams is to be like a business owner, as we've talked about before. And yes. now you have finally fulfilled that. So <laughs> yeah, very stoked with that. Yeah. I, yeah. For anyone wanting to know more about the business side in Australia, listen to Measure Twice, Cut Once. Uh, yep. Sumo and uh, and Chris got on some people who are from Australia, and they talked a lot about the uh, the business side of starting a business. They had Leroy, former F Clamp level supporter, and uh, another guy that I can't remember his name. But uh, they were just talking about running a business, and it was a very in- informative because they were mentioning stuff like eighty thousand dollars is the cutoff, which seems like a lot. Yeah. It, it it yes it does, but it depends on your business. I mean, if right. you're if you're a builder or a contractor, you easily make eighty thousand dollars in a year. I don't yeah. see my wife and I making eighty thousand dollars in our first year, but I mean that is goals. Like we eventually totally. want to get to that point where. I want this business to, to pretty much blow up to a point where it's going to make us happy. If you know what I mean? Like where we don't have to think about money and, and we can actually sustain our lives with it, which would be amazing. So yeah, I have big plans and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll go through. Cool. Um, but on that, so 347 views I've got from that video, mm. which that's is no, that that's three times ratio. what I normally get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that conversion ratio is like for half the people, half the new people who watched your video subscribed. That's pretty yeah. good. That means yes. your video was really good. So you're a CNC yeah. channel now. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because like I, I have actually been thinking about that a lot, and I, there's a lot more CNC videos to come. I've already got two in editing currently. Yeah. Um, mainly, I'm so I'm trying to do like the beginner CNC of like, this is how you set up your CNC from the beginning, but not just like you need to make a spoil board more of like, how do you design that infusion and transfer it over and and all that sort of (laughs) stuff. But I want to make normal videos as well. So, well, I can't wait to watch your normal videos. (laughs) 
Yeah. Actually, no, you, in saying that, you downloaded Fusion. I so did. Ho- my Six videos could help now. you. Yeah, but you, yeah. you started to wanting to use it now. Hopefully my videos could help you out with that. Totally. I will watch so. them because I would like, I support you. And mm. I've watched, you know, Thank all you. of the videos, but I look forward to your project videos. <laughs> Morley, what have you been up to this week? Oh, it's me. What's in your clamps? Oh my god, it's been it's been a wild week, uh, which you wouldn't ascertain from my uh, social media presence because I've been very quiet there, and it's for um, a very good reason. In that, uh, with camp wrapping up uh, at the time of this recording. We have two more days left in camp. Um, I've been making gifts for the instructors who I manage. Ah. Um, so a lot of them follow me on Instagram, so I don't want them to see what I'm working on. But by the time this episode comes out, uh, if any of them listen to the podcast, uh, I will have already given it to them. So I can say it here. I'm So there it's, it's for eight, eight people, and I'm making them um, each a custom leather-bound notebook. Um so hand stitched, leather bound, case bound notebook. Um, doing three D printed embossings on the cover, um, and integrating lots of little details that are a little like inside jokes and memories of camp. So for the end papers, I'm using um, activity schedules that I splatter painted, and ah. um, I try to think of so like what are the symbols of an instructor at the Steam Project, and um, one of them is a hot glue gun because we use hot glue guns all the time. And the other one is the laser cutter. So I, on one side, I embossed a uh, hot glue gun silhouette. On the other one, the danger laser radiation silhouette, which actually looks really cool, embossed into yeah. leather. That um, does sound cool. So for now, the fountain has taken a backseat um, because I'm just really, I've been working on these notebooks for like the last week now, uh, just in my off time from work. I actually went to a cottage with Eden's family this weekend, and that's when I was stitching them together and uh, gluing the end pages on. So it, it'll actually be kind of cool. This this video is taking place across a lot of settings. It's taking place at work. It's taking place at the cottage. So I made sure to get some cool, like um, just you know, stitching them together at the picnic mm. table and and in my workshop. Um, that's cool. So yeah, they're all they're they're very Do- close. Do you run the Steam Project Instagram? I don't. No, we have a whole creative oh. team that works on it. But we just passed a thousand followers today. Um, what do you uh, What do you think about the Steam Project Instagram? Oh, it's good. I just don't see a lot of you. So I thought maybe you were behind the camera. I'm not behind the camera. I'm behind the scenes a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you'll see a lot of the. There's actually is a a few pictures with me in them. Mostly from at the beginning of the summer, but um, mm-hmm. since I'm mostly like working working on the programming and the bigger picture stuff in camp, um, gotcha. You know, they, it's, it's just because like he blends in the with campers. the kids over there. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure all the rest of the instructors are younger than Morley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to um, to give those to them. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be very nice and. It's it's a bit crazy that the summer's wrapping up. There's la- lots to do still with this last week, and we we have a final year end banquet, which is when I'll give it to them. And with it oh, yeah. being a um, a young camp, it's like you know levels bigger than it has been in years past. So it's it's going to be cool. cool. Um, but yeah, pushing pushing to the finish line of summer. I like it. Yeah. What have you been up to, Grant? Oh, thanks for asking. I have finally put out, so a long time ago in a faraway galaxy, Ethan threw a box of maker pipe my way. It literally, if you watch the video, you'll see it. Um, and uh, I was, he asked me if I would uh, take on this like kind of collaboration project um, where you basically get sent a set of uh, mixed, it's called their mixed structural kit or mixed kit um and you have to make something with it that can be disassembled the whole point of it is is that you make it you disassemble it you send the parts on to everyone else um so that they can then make something with it so it's kind of a fun thing that you know you're just disassembling it at the end i i actually kept my stuff but that's 
neither here nor there. But uh, the fun part about it is that, uh, yeah, he sent me the stuff. I made a, a ladder toss game, which is like you use some bolas, which are like balls on like two balls on the end of like with a string connecting them. I use golf balls and you throw them at this like ladder and try and get them to, to wrap around. And it's a, it's a fun game to go can't like that. We take camping. We used to always bring uh, horseshoes, but horseshoes like make a lot of noise. They go clang. And, you know, I'm sure lots of people don't appreciate the noise when you're trying to enjoy nature. Mm -hmm. Um, So this ladder toss game is like a nice little thing and you can get them for like $20 on Amazon, or you can spend a lot more than that and make it out of maker pipe. Uh, but it's a, it was a fun little project. Um, and the, the best part about it is at the end I threw, uh, well, I, I actually dug a hole all the way to Houston, Texas and sent it to, uh, Dean DePlantis. Um, so you'll be seeing him, uh, former guest Dean DePlantis will be making something out of the maker pipe. And he was nice enough to send me a beer in return. So you have to watch the video to see how he did that. Um, the other Mm. one viewers of our channel will notice that behind me, I don't have a bookshelf there anymore. Um, so I have, uh, started, um, so that bookshelf that's been behind me was actually, uh, something that my wife's grandfather made for her when she was a kid. Um, it's just a really simple pine bookshelf. It's nothing like extravagant or anything. Um, but it's something that she's had for a long time. She doesn't have a lot of stuff from her childhood. Um, so we're going to be, uh, refinishing it and, and kind of modernizing it. It kind of has this, it's gone now, so I can't point to it, but it's kind of got this like, you know, old Scott style look to it. Uh, and I'm going to be taking some of the pieces off and sanding it up, potentially painting it depending on how it sands and how it looks. Um, yeah, and just modernizing that. So that's going to be a maybe video. I'm going to film it all and see if I if it's enough to be a video or not, or if it's just me sanding for three hours. I don't know. We'll, you can we'll always see. make a, a one-minute Instagram video out of it. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know why, but I just don't do that. It's fun. I don't, it's a fun little yeah. challenge. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually making one right now of another project that I didn't mention. But that's what I like doing with the little 3D printing projects because they're not – big enough for YouTube videos, but uh, they work really well on Instagram. Well, so I was looking at my Instagram the other day and I realized that I've really neglected it. And I can tell this because I had like some good growth and then I don't know what, I just stopped caring about it for a little bit. And I've kind of plateaued, I plateaued around 1500 followers and I've seen a lot of people that I looked around, like I know like Vincent Ferrari is a really good example. He's coming up on 2000 followers. And when I met him, he had 400 and now, now he's almost at 2000. I go, but I had 1500 when I met him, <laughs> right? Like what happened? So I think I've, that's a good idea, Marley. I should probably throw a little bit of, uh, effort into doing Instagram only projects. That's an Ethan Carter special. You know, he likes to and, do that for sure. And yet you still post more than me. I, I am the worst when it comes to Instagram. I, I'll i be lucky to yep. post once a week. I'm so I know, bad. and that's only when we tell you to. <laughs> yeah, that's on Claire, my yeah, personal one, though. Yeah, I <clears throat> I want to try and get better at that, but I don't know. I don't it's really hard. care, to be honest. It's really hard because you don't see the growth between... Like, if you... If you like, I started Instagram to as part of YouTube, like potentially to grow YouTube. What I like about Instagram is I've met a lot of people and the grow, a lot of the growth I think I had was because I was following new people. And when you start following new people, they follow you back or, or they don't, I don't like, I wasn't follow for follow, but you start following. If you're following, the more people you follow, the more likely people are going to follow you back. Mm -hmm. And I've really, I've kind of maxed out on the amount of profiles I can, and people I can chat with. So I've stopped following but yeah this doesn't segue very well into our conversation yeah you so, almost just started a whole other topic yeah, yeah we just started a whole other topic instead what we're gonna do well is adam is going to shake something and uh for the folio 
The folio. Do you mean the folio? So, <laughs> folio. So there's whatever a, it is. <laughs> there's a beer brand here in Australia. Hang on, I'm trying to get my fat fingers in the bag. Um, beer brand here in Australia called Han. They have a beer called um, I don't know Han something. Anyway, inside the bottle cap has a thing to discuss with your mates. So I thought it'd be a cool episode to get a bag of bottle caps. I've got about 30 of them and uh, we could pick one out, discuss it and pick another one out and continue. So All right, let's do it. Let's kick it off. All right. Is poker a sport? Discuss. No, it's a game. Is baseball a sport? Yes, baseball is definitely a sport. Golf is, is a it? sport. Table tennis is a sport. Poker is not a sport. It's not physical enough. Is so, F1 a sport? Yes. Is e-games a sport? No. Why not? Is e- e-sports? I would call sports. it a game in the same way as I would call e- poker e-sports a Esports is not a sport? No, I think if I think if uh, if it's that stationary, it's a game. It doesn't make it any lesser of a competitive activity, but I think... Uh, it's like that, you know, it's that famous quote with the, the uh, what is it? The smut hearings in the U.S. Congress. It's like porn. There's no clear definition for it, but you know it when you see it. Mm. And I would say mm. poker is is not that sport. It's not a sport. Okay. Great game, though. I, yeah. I don't think poker is a sport, but I wanted to make it a more of a discussion than us all three saying no. <laughs> well, if we um, all think no, yeah. let's just let's go to the next one. Well, well the, funny, the, the funny thing is I don't think poker is a sport, but I do think that esports is a sport. Why just because it's not e-sports just because it's, poker? Because it's competitive. Just because it's, not, um, just because it's not physical, there's still a mindset. I suppose there is in poker as well, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, there yeah. is in every – like you could say that about chess. You could say that about – uh, like go any other game that is involves sitting. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know how much legs. Let's let's choose a more well, uh, um, a controversial yeah. one with with not just that's based right. fully on nuance. All right. Next one. Uh, biggest fall from grace. Biggest, biggest fall. fall oh from wow! Grace. I'm gonna say Bill Cosby. Oh, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally like the most clean cut, like what could you not like about this guy comedian to be like, Oh boy, this is a bad dude. Yeah. That's, Ooh, that's I, a big one. That's going to be hurt. That's going to be hard to wait. Yeah. I mean, it's not like anyone thought Bernie Madoff was like a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Right. Or Jeffrey Epstein. Right. Well, you're just, see, this is your thinking of of recent stuff, but there's some people like O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Right, that's a big fall from grace. I saw a great clip recently. Uh, I think it was Norm Macdonald hosting the Oscars or something, uh, and he made a very uh, he made a comment about O.J. Simpson getting away with murder. And I'm butchering it, <laughs> um, but it was right after that all happened. You don't. Mm. Harvey Weinstein. That's another big fall from grace. But again, like who loved Harvey Weinstein? Like I think based on the stories, it sounds like everyone in the industry had a sense that he was a, he was a scumbag. Right. Except everyone in the industry. We're not talking about the, – the media would be like it's another Weinstein spectacular, right? <laughs> like and, and everyone's like, yeah, well, you know, if Harvey Weinstein's involved, it's going to be amazing. I don't mm. know. Yeah, that's a fair point. Hmm. I'm thinking like another comedian, M- Michael Richards. That was a big fall from grace. Yeah, but he kind of he kind of came back in a way. Like he apologized. Well, yeah. He's coming back, but he still fell. Yeah, you don't have to stay down. Yeah, that's that's one. I think I think Bill Cosby was, was definitely more dramatic. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm. I don't really know people, so. All right, so there's give us another one then. All right. Greatest movie duo. I like this one. Oh, movie duo. Okay. Yeah. Are we talking the actors or the characters? I think actors. I think actors. Okay. Um, Simon I, uh, Pegg and Nick Frost. 
It's a good one. Ooh. I like the uh, dead and, yeah. Johnny Knoxville and Sean. Oh, what's his last name? In Dukes of Hazard. The oh, yeah. guy from uh, Stifler. I can't remember his All name. right, the mentions for this episode are going to be crazy. I'm only putting down people that like, <laughs> people don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, the people do know. People that are relevant. Like, don't put yeah, like yeah. OJ Simpson. Put like. Yeah, yeah. who's OJ Simpson? Yeah. Um, <laughs> other duos. I'm trying to think of some like some good comedic duos. Sean William Scott. Just for those. Sean William Scott. Um, yes. No, no. Uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Ice Cube and. Oh, I, like one of my favorite actors right now. The little, the short black dude. Oh, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Kevin Hart. Yeah, Kevin, yeah. Hart. Kevin, Kevin Hart and Ice Cube. They're okay, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that one. Really? You haven't seen Ride Along? No. No. What? You need oh, to watch you know, Ride Along. You know, it's a classic. Uh, Will Ferrell and um, his co-star in Step Brothers. What's the guy's name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, this is, a, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I'm liking this question. It, it is embarrassing that you don't know any people's names. Um, okay. John C. Uh, John C. Ryan. John, yeah. All right. I'm drawing a blank on this one, so I, I'm not going to have a great <laughs> answer. Well, it's embarrassing I, you don't I, know I, people's I, names as he looks it up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that. I'm not the one saying they're Grant's great. Grant's just a discreet Googler. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the one who's saying they're a great uh, on screen duo. I'm I, so this is where okay we did the what about a good characters like Starsky and Hutch or uh, you know Turner and Hooch or hmm. you know what's a, what's your like favorite duo that's uh, fiction fictionary um, duo see all my all mm. my oh actually so if I just say my favorite movie which is Smokey and the Bandit. Well, my favorite, go. my favorite duo would be um, Smokey and Snowman. Here's a good one: um, Jeff Lebowski and Walter in The Big Lebowski. That's a fun duo. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Chip, Chip, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Never heard of it. No. Oh my god! No. You guys. All right, Adam, I need a new one. All right. Uh, some of these are like Australian based, but I'm just going to change it up. So, what TV show should they remake? It says what Aussie TV show, but let's just go what TV show should they remake? Hmm. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Okay, that was an easy <laughs> so, one. I'm not a big fan of remakes in general, but I, I loved watching Lost uh, when it was on TV. And when I started university, I started re watching it. And I was kind of blown away with how corny it was watching it as an adult. Like it definitely, it definitely lost some of its uh, shine on the second viewing. So I don't know if they should remake Lost, but I feel like the concept of the show is is a lot better than the execution. Hmm. I don't, I don't know um, about a particular TV show, but I'm thinking more something along the lines of like Knight Rider or something like that with today's technology would be interesting. Yeah. Or the A team. So, yeah. Or like the A team or something. So, so not necessarily a certain show, but like that sort of old TV show, but with today's technology, I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. We mm. could have like the hundred thousand dollar man is now the trillion dollar man. <laughs> yeah. Six billion. Jeffrey, man. Jeffrey Bezos. Yeah. All right. That song. Yeah. Anyway. Um, are salary caps a good or bad thing in sport? Oh, salary, salary caps. I thought you said salary caps. I thought you said salary caps. I was yeah, like, sorry, my, is my nose is blocked. No, no, my nose is blocked. Do you have salary caps over there? Like, I don't, does the NFL have salary caps? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. I don't pay attention to the logistics. So, the only thing that I'll say about this is that salary caps often help owners make more money. So they funnel money. So if the team does really, really well, the owner just makes more money, and the yeah. players don't. Mm-hmm. I think. But what a it good does, thing. it, it I, I think it helps out other teams, right? Well, so like when you have like a franchise team like the Toronto Maple Leafs, who will make money, they'll sell out every game and lose every game. 
They don't, it doesn't yeah. matter. They'll, they're sold out every single time, right? Where you look at like the Ottawa Senators, they have trouble filling the thing. Even when they sell out, if you look around the stadium, if you're there and they say it's a sold out game, you look around the stadium, it's half empty, right? They have a problem <laughs> actually getting people to show up. So I can understand yeah. they need salary caps so that those smaller teams have a chance. All right, I'm out of my depth on this one, so I'm gonna. I'm well, gonna so, comment. so I see it more of the, the point of, sorry, hang on a sec. The point, the point of having a salary cap, I see, is that you can't just go buy every single top player. Yeah, like the New York and, have, and just, yeah, and just have. Why do they not have a salary cap or something? I don't think the baseball had a salary cap for a long time. Right, yeah, maybe so, they did so, now, but they didn't for a yeah. long time. Yeah, so in other words, you just have a team that has every elite player, mm-hmm. and then you just have teams that don't have the elite players, and they're just going to get smashed. So I, th- I think they're a good thing. They, they definitely add something to the sport. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. All right. Oh, this is a fun one. Most adventurous thing you've ever done? Oh, adventurous. So I met up with this like <laughs> like weird guy from the internet. And we went on a two day canoe trip. That's true. We were I, we were both saying when we were there, we we're like, this could have uh, hypothetically ended really badly. But it felt I I mean I said this. I think I said this when we were there. But it felt very natural right off the bat. Like I I was not worried at all. Not like I was worried until we like met in real life. But it easily like we could have got on the water, and then you were like. No, I don't paddle. I'm sorry. So was there actually a part of you that me. was like that was nervous in the car of like what if this guy's like insane? But like not like the tiniest part. Like a tiny, tiny part. Okay. Because like okay. I've only ever met you like I've chatted with you, but I've you know, I've only really ever chatted with you in a group, right? Yeah, that's fair. Mm. That was pre podcast. No, it was it was during podcast, but Yeah, but this is still a group. Well. Fair. Fair, good point. Right? Like, everything is a group. We've never actually had, like, one-on-one conversations. Um, so you might have been one of those people who's like, I'm really great with people around, but as soon as no one's watching, I turn into, uh, you know, I don't know, prima donna. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah. It, it I didn't, could think, all I didn't think it. It could all have been fake. It's it could have been. People, people are... I've met some fake people. I've dated some fake people. So, I... Yeah. It's very possible. Um, mm-hmm. Morley or Adam? I don't. I don't really. No, I'm not really an adventurous person. I mean, I don't know. It's probably a bit of a cop out, but one of the most adventurous things I guess I've done is I completely planned my mate's bucks party. We uh, went for a trip ten hours north for um, five days. And just planned everything, and I, I did a lot of things that I haven't done before. There, we went um, like indoor skydiving and stuff. But I don't know if that's really adventurous. I don't know. I'm not mm. not really an adventurous kind of person. I would love in, to do. What was that? You live in Australia. It's an adventure every day. Yeah, those drop there like things trying to kill you on every step. Like you have to check your shoes before you go out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. So I watched I watched a video the other day of um like. It was like 100 facts you don't know about Australia or something. And I was just watching that curiosity. And I was like, this is why you guys think that we're just surrounded by deadly things. Like, it's like we have like the top 15 deadliest snakes in the world in Australia or something. Like, all these crazy facts. And I'm just like, this, like, yeah, okay, maybe it's true, but like, you never see any of it. You know, like, no. 80, 80% of Australia's land isn't even lived on. And that's where all that stuff lives. So, like, right. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. All right. Next. next. Or wait, Morley. What Morley didn't answer. I, I mean, I guess Morley's going to be the most adventurous of us all. Well, so I feel like, like I've done a lot of like mildly adventurous things. Like, you know, like I, you know, I traveled around the world to Thailand with Eden, which was like super fun. I was doing it with her, so it doesn't feel like it was like an incredibly like risky thing or or anything like that. Um, you know, I done a bunch of extreme sports and and move to new cities and things, but I don't know, like the most adventurous thing. Well, like how do you guys define adventure? Cause you were talking about risk. Yeah. I and guess like, that's I how think, I'm thinking of it. 
going to Thailand is very adventurous. Yeah. But it may not be risky. I would say – actually, so I, maybe just to tell a story from that trip, um, we – we went on like we went we traveled to um, a jungle in like the center of Thailand or I guess the rainforest, um, and we were it was on a national park, and so we stayed in a hostel like right outside of the national parks, close enough that you could just walk into the entrance of the park and then go on rainforest hikes, um, and it wasn't very well marked trails or anything, and we were using this this app which is really handy for traveling called Maps Me. Um, and you can download maps of whole regions and people mm-hmm. comment on them kind of like TripAdvisor. Um, so we would always just download maps of the areas where we were. And um, it ended up being like actually quite the little adventure. So the the, the trails were terribly marked. Uh, we had this kind of like series of waterfalls that we wanted to hike along. But before long, like we didn't really see the trail anymore. And we kind of were just going off the fact that like we kind of had to follow this river. Um this was a region where there were leeches absolutely everywhere across the jungle floor. And the way they would find you is they could smell you and they would just start coming towards you. So like you'd stop as you were walking and all of a sudden oh, no. from like 360 degrees, you would see leeches start inchworming towards you. And they're pretty harmless. Oh my God, that's – But it's that's very creepy. So creepy. And then every – and I was wearing hiking sandals the whole time. So like, you know, you have to stop every 10 minutes or so and flick leeches off your feet. Um, apologies for anyone who's grossed out by that. Um, That's and like, me out. we had this kind of like moment where we were, we were walking along the river on rocks and Eden had her first like encounter with the leeches and she kind of freaked out and almost fell into the rushing river. And I was like, oh, Listen, no. I, I know this is freaky, but like you have to like keep calm or you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> um, and, and then eventually we got stuck in a thunderstorm uh, right as we reached the last waterfall, um, I've actually, you know, I've been on a lot of adventures with Eden. There was, a, we went camping in New Hampshire once and, uh, we hiked, we went on a big hike. It started raining on the way down. We were both underdressed and I'm pretty sure we both got hypothermia. Like we, we went and like took a nap in the tent and then we ho- woke up and we were still cold. Um, wow. yeah, I love going on adventures with Eden. It's one of our favorite things to do with her. Oh. Cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. I'm going to make this one TV or movie, but best movie catchphrase. Best movie catchphrase. What's in the box? I don't know that. So, that is so from tell- Seven. Yeah. Oh, I saw that when I was like, younger, but I don't remember it. So I'm going to tell a story to go answer this one. So I have a colleague at work, and he likes to quote movies from around <laughs> the time that I was born. And then he gets mad at me that I don't know them. But he's like like a really good friend at work. Um, anyways, so the night that uh, it was like a retirement party for another colleague, and my wife came. So it's like the night that like all my work colleagues uh, met my wife. Um, he drank some beer that he swears was roofied because he doesn't remember the night. But (laughs) he drank like a a, a few too many beers. Anyways, he kept saying this line, chicks dig me. And I'm pretty sure, I think it's from Stripes. Um, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, he just kept saying it to her over and over. And he just kept going like, hey, I'm Bob and chicks dig me. And it was just so funny (laughs) because like, you know, like when you be like sometimes when drunk people get stuck in like a little bit of a loop. Yeah. Yeah. He got stuck in that loop. And it was uh, so chicks dig me like is a fun one for me. I um, I was trying to think of something out of the box, but like. I, I quote a lot of like um, common phrases, I guess, like all the time, like here's Johnny um, and that sort of stuff. I, I don't really, I don't really have anything else, you know? Hmm. All know. right. Well, next. Yeah, yeah. Let's go next. Okay. Uh, what's a worse look? Joggers and jeans or biking lycra? Okay. Hold on. Wait, you're going to have to define joggers. joggers. Joggers, sneakers, runners. Wait, what's okay. the second one? Just like 
wearing a black, black like lycra. tight. Okay, like like, like the that. assholes that take up the whole road. What they wear? Yes. So that clothes. outfit it, makes sense on a bike, but yes. But what's the worst look? I would say Je- the je- jeans and sneakers or lycra. I'd say the, the bike say lycra. That. I think yeah, the whole padded sure. the padded butt thing uh, has it, it kind of makes you look like you poop your pants a little bit. Yep. Interesting. Why, why is right. it the padded butt? It doesn't need to be that tight. You're not in a race. Okay. Well, You're just riding along the road. I, yeah. I'll just put this out here. Apparently, it's helping with chafing. Okay. So wear something over the top of it then. I agreed. I would not be <laughs> caught dead wearing any <laughs> shorts. <laughs> All right. Rollerblades, <clears throat> rollerblades and scooters. Are they ever a good idea as an adult? Oh, you know, I'll tell you, like scootering, like freestyle wise is becoming really big. Uh, like I used to go to the skate park as like a, as like a young teen. And if like a kid was scootering on the ramp, it'd be like, okay, like, what are you doing here? But you go to a skate park now and <laughs> it's just like for skateboards only. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And you go to a skate park now and, uh, Scooters are huge and people are really yeah. good at doing tricks. Yeah, like I, really it's are. probably going to be in, if it's not already like in the X games, if not the Olympics, considering they just added skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Um, and sorry, what was the question? Cause both of those sports are actually pretty amazing. If you've ever seen rollerblading. Uh, yeah. Freestyle rollerblading is absolutely incredible. Like big ups to both of those sports. What okay. So what question? about just in general? Are they good? At, are they a good an idea as an adult? So just in general, not as in a sport. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're fun. It's a good way to stay in shape. Uh, if you play hockey, rollerblading is great cross training. I see no issues with with either of those. Yeah, and the I th- cool I like, think- scooters are also a cool like a uh, commuting tool. Like you'll see yeah. it in cities a lot now. Like people just riding scooters to do do that like one to two kilometer ride if they don't mm-hmm. want to bike. I th- I think uh, there's definitely come a lot more common these days compared to like say five years ago but in saying that yes okay a scooter that's made for an adult fine but a little kid's scooter that's like twenty dollars from walmart that like a full size one but it's like from walmart and get a break that is not a good idea for an adult oh in terms of safety this is this is asking for trouble yeah Yeah. so here's what i'll say rollerblades to me are not like they're not great because you kind of get somewhere and you kind of get stuck. You need to like bring <laughs> shoes with you. So all of a sudden yeah. now you, you've yeah. got a backpack. Whereas like a scooter, most of them like fold and you could just carry it with you if you needed to go yeah. somewhere that – like I just feel like if you got to a set of scare, stairs on a rollerblades, like I've seen people do stairs, down seems okay. Up seems much harder. I like um, I like rollerblades as a form of like emergency transportation. Um. And be- because like they take up very little space. So like when I was at school and like my bike broke, I like found a pair of rollerblades for like $10 at a thrift store and I could get to campus in like five minutes and then throw them in my locker. Yeah. But if you had a scooter, would that have worked as well? Cause it would have fit in your locker. Or I don't think it would have. Well, it might've fit. Yeah. I guess a folding scooter could have worked, but I, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like rollerblades, are kind of more compact in some ways. Like you can actually put them in a backpack. They're definitely more compact. I will say that you can get rollerblades that are smaller than, well, unless you got like a razor scooter. I don't know. That's what I was saying. A razor scooter. Yeah. 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 All right. I I don't know. Yeah. Go ahead. Go. (laughs) How many times can you ask your friends if they'll help you move? Every time you move. I don't know. Yeah, I have they, a buddy. If they're uh, your real friend, I mean, if you move in once a month, but screw you. So one of my one of my best friends, Maddie. Shout out to Maddie, um, is such a wonderful guy that when I had to move apartments in Montreal, um, he drove me in his minivan from New Hampshire to Montreal, like four and a half hours, and then helped me move uh, apartments. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen this video on my channel, but I made a folding bookshelf um for the purposes of like it was one of like the first videos i made uh basically like a road case where you could like strap the books in place and then fold it up and it had casters on it 
And it was kind of a good idea in theory, but when it was full of books and you had to move it, it was like the heaviest thing in the world. And we moved it, like moving it, first of all, out of a third floor apartment down two flights of stairs was so scary. And then moving it into my new apartment up a, a spiral staircase and a fire escape was like equally, if not more scary. And like to this day, Matt is like, I think that's the heaviest thing I've ever moved. <laughs> and I don't think after that, like I can ask him in good conscience to help me move again. Like, I think I still have to like pay him back in some ways. I need to help him move. It's un- too unbalanced right now. I just imagine well, I like think- the friend's couch. Yeah. 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 Pivot. Pivot. <laughs> Um, I think that you can ask your friends to move as many times as you move, as long as you're as equally yeah, like, for sure. e- helping them out. Yeah. But I also think like if, if a friend of yours is moving, volunteer instead of waiting for them to ask. Yeah. If you're willing to help, volunteer your time. Right? Yeah. Like it makes it takes a lot of like I when I moved I didn't ask anyone to help. I asked my dad to help. So my dad pretty much did it all while I was at work. He just like, I was like, come on up anytime this day. And I'll, once we get home from work, we'll do it and we'll move the next day. And I got home and like, he had an entire like moving van packed full of stuff like Tetris doll, everything. Um, yeah. That's what I think. I don't know. I, I think too, if there's like a feeling of like, if anyone helps me move, I always want to like buy them dinner, buy them drinks, something like that. And oh, of course, yeah, yeah. And if like you know, if you're if you're paying someone back, and I don't know, like in that case, like I, I Maddie, like took him out to dinner a few times in Montreal. You know, that's a it's like a win win for everyone, um, right? But it, you know, you- people have a sense of like what is fair. Like if you're asking someone to like help you move an entire house and you buy them like a piece of pizza, like no, you got to do a little bit better than that. Have you seen uh, Corner Gas? No, I think I've seen it on Netflix, but I haven't watched it. Okay, so Corner Gas is like a big uh, Canadian TV show. It's filmed in Saskatchewan with Brent Butt. Anyways, Lacey in the show, um, she asks people to help her move, and she promises pizza and beer. And at the end, it's like warm beer and a DiGiorno. It's like it's not (laughs) even delivery. And the people are so mad. Anyways, that's no. Take it. Just yeah, take him no. out. Go out for a minute. Well, like you, you can be like, we're gonna have pizza at the place. Like that makes sense. And then you later also take them out. Like yeah. that can be the the pizza is like the you know you're hot and sweaty. You don't want to go out to a restaurant that night. It's surprising how yeah. little money it takes to like kind of level up an experience. Like yeah, you could buy them pizza or beer, or you could spend like. 20 more dollars and take them out for a nice meal that will feel like a much better experience. Uh, and I think uh, in situations right. like where you're really going to like make someone feel appreciated. I'm with Grant though. Like the last thing I want to do after helping someone move or moving myself is go out for dinner. Well, okay, I just want to sit like, on the floor and eat a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, or just, you know, splurge yeah. and get like a six pack or this is actually know, really ironic nice pizza. because so i um, pretty sure I just saw that our lockdown is extended till September 10. Um, but one of the rules that allows us to go to someone's house is to help them move. Now, my friend, um, my best mate, my wife's best mate, who are married, they are moving house this weekend. And I actually get to see my friend for the first time in two months because I get to help him move. So That's I'm excited. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Uh, first, Wear a mask. Yeah. Ooh. First rap song you memorized. I know. Oh, Mr. Fresh Carter. Prince Bel-Air. Oh. Sorry, great. Ooh, Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I like that one. Yeah. I haven't memorized, but it's not my first one. Mine was Mr. Carter by Lil Wayne from the Carter 1 or Two? 3. Um, mm. my, my brother's eight years older, and since he's my older brother, I liked all Chris. the things he liked. And one of them at the time was was Lil Wayne. And uh, (laughs) we used to listen to that album all the time. And I was like, I'm going to learn all the lyrics to this. And I would just like, I would like, I remember in in grade six, I was on the soccer team in school and like to try to like impress the older kids. I like rap the whole thing. And I felt really cool at the time. 
Uh, I also memorized "Just Lose It" by Eminem, which is kind of like a funny song. But yeah, that, was, so my, that was a couple years later. My first song that I ever memorized was "The Real Slim Shady" by Eminem. Nice. Yeah, his are kind of conducive for memorizing. Well, Very so cool. Eminem, Eminem was pretty much like what I grew up on. Like that, Eminem was like my rap scene. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, I think yeah. you're my brother's age. I think you guys are the you're 31, 80, 19, 32, right? 89, yeah. Yeah, you guys are the same age. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to well, try and get – we've still got a few left, so let's let's try and be a little bit quicker because we are running out of time. Uh, best club song – best club song or anthem? Broccoli by uh, Dram and uh, Lil Yachty. Okay, well, that's wrong because oh. I don't know any of that. LMFAO <laughs> party rock anthem. Yeah, that, I was going to say LMFAO as, as well. My son is so my son's five is so obsessed with LMFAO, and like there's so much swearing in the video clips, and he's obsessed with it. And like we he went to school, and like he was telling his teachers about it, and we, my wife's like, "I promise, like we are good people. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> just let him watch whatever he wants." Anyway, does beetroot belong on a burger? Yes. Does what? That's an Australian Be- one. Does beetroot belong on a burger? Hundred percent, yes. What is? So I, I what think this is you don't, really an Australian one. What you don't know what beetroot is? So, are you talking about like a red beet? Yeah. I, I like purple. beets. I've never had one on a burger though. What? I, are you? I, are you? Oh I'm God. like Doug Funny for those who get the reference, <sighs> and I don't do like you, beets. Do you put um, pineapple on a burger? No, uh, oh no, not, not not outside of Pulp Fiction, but that sounds good. Oh my god, you guys need to look up an Australian burger and get one. Oh yeah, I just found it. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah, I'm down. I love so these. Good. It's yeah. sweet, so, so it's like ketchup. Well, you have ketchup on there as well. Sure, sounds sounds even better. Yeah, yeah. A burger for me oh, would be you. like meat, cheese, egg, pineapple, beetroot, lettuce, and some other sauce. Egg. Yeah, egg. Jesus. Okay. Oh my god. This, oh, and bacon. This is, a, this is a quite a burger. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. So a burger for me is is a burger, cheese, ketchup and mustard, pickles. If you're being fancy, tomatoes. I don't eat pickles or tomato. Um, is cereal Better. an all day food? Yeah, according to my wife. Yeah. So I asked my wife about this, and she's like, "No," and I'm like, "I don't know. I've had cereal for dinner before." But I have a segue for this one, so answer first. I don't think cereal is a meal. I think cereal is a great late night snack. No. It is Dry nothing cereal. for me. It is a breakfast. You eat it at the time before lunch, and that's it. Okay. Now, what's the difference What's the difference between bread and toast? Is that a trick question? Toast is toasted bread. Okay. So you have toast for breakfast. It's normal. You have a sandwich for breakfast. Is that weird? I eat whatever the fuck i want for breakfast <laughs> but it's the same oh, it, but it feels today <laughs> well, i thought we're just already. explicit every episode now <laughs> but like it feels weird to eat a sandwich for breakfast but you're literally eating depends the same on the thing sandwich. depends on the sandwich i'll eat an egg sandwich yeah. for breakfast boy yeah. i'll eat whatever if i you, want for breakfast okay, if you ate a peanut butter sandwich for breakfast would that be weird yeah, no, uh, I eat peanut butter sandwich, not sandwiches, but usually on toast. I do like toast. That's, what, lot, no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Peanut butter on toast is fine for breakfast, but peanut butter sandwich for breakfast would be weird. But it's the exact same I, thing. It's just not cooked. I don't think it's that's, weird. I just prefer difference. toast. Yeah. I wouldn't eat peanut butter on toast. I've I've always been like, if bread is good enough, you don't need to put anything on it. Maybe butter. All right, you guys are gonna hate me for this, but wait, wait, wait uh, hang breakfast. on, hang on. Okay, you you eat dry toast. No, I don't need toast. You don't. If bread is good enough, you don't need to toast. It. You just eat bread you, by itself. You eat dry bread. Well, it's not dry. It's if bread is good, it's moist. Like okay. I'm not talking like a, a loaf of bread. I just grab a piece out of it and eat it. I'm talking right. like good bread. You're yeah, right. There. Yes, and I definitely do. <laughs> All right, Morley, you guys go are ahead. gonna you're gonna hate me for this, but uh, one toast creation I really like is toast with peanut butter. Cheddar cheese and honey. Sorry, that sounds gross. I know you're going to say Boy. that, but it's good. Oh, also, sure actually, is, uh, put on some thinly sliced apples on there as well. Like not a lot of cheddar cheese, but like just a bit and some apple and some honey. Ooh, that's good. So the apple, honey, and cheese sounds good. 
the peanut butter ruins it, and I love peanut butter. So, so knock it till you try it. Yeah, right. I, I, I am knocking it. I'm green eggs and hamming it. <laughs> I, I don't have an answer for this one because I'm not a sporting person. But what sporting event would you like to go back and witness? Ooh, that's kind of cool, Mister NFL. That's person. the only sport I watch, but well, then say Super Bowl two. Well, no. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say I would like to be at Super Bowl Fifty. Perfect. I would like to be at the Esports Championship. No, I don't. Know. I, don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Marley. The fir- very I'm first. Olympics. I don't. I'm also not. A, I'm also not a big sports fan. But um, it sounded like when I don't know his first name, but. The Gracie who beat all of those martial artists all over the world when he was bringing jujitsu into the public consciousness in like the nineties sounded pretty wild to see because he was hmm. taking down like people double his size. So that probably would have been pretty cool to see. Hmm. Never never uh, heard of this, but that's cool. Uh, just look up like the origins of jujitsu and the Gracie cool. family. I, I, if I were to really think about it, I'm sure there's a race I'd like to see like. I'd like to be at a like Colin McRae's last rally event or something. But yeah, it'd be cool to go like the first Olympics or something. Yeah, that yeah. would definitely be cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so for this one, Grant, your Canada, and uh, Molly, your America. Most Aussie menu item. So Canadian and American menu item. No, well, that burger you made. Oh, oh, oh! I see. I see. I see. I have to choose an American yes. one. Yes. Uh, Canadi- the most Canadian is poutine, and the second most is uh, is is Canadian bacon, female bacon. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll add one onto there, and and that's sushi pizza. Is that Canadian? So, wait, what? I never. American? I think it is like like mayonnaise on on sushi, and then also fried. Hmm. Um, um, I'm trying. I've to never think. I- ever heard of this, so I don't, yeah. I'm going to go look it up. I'm going to throw you back most. to a previous episode and say a battered serve because you have no idea. You didn't guys didn't know what that was. Oh, you know what? You know, it's a very American dish is a uh, burnt ends, which is a barbecue mm. thing. So it's like you go to a barbecue place. I've seen it on YouTube. It's really, really good. It's, it's, it's kind of like pulled pork, but I think, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think the idea behind it is it's all like the pieces of meat that have kind of like stuck to the sides of pan and are really like fatty and crispy. And they make that into a sandwich. And if that isn't American, I don't know what is. Hmm. Hmm. Very yeah. interesting. See, so from, from an sushi outside pizza of- is Canadian, by the way. Oh, just to confirm. let's go. <laughs> I've never yeah. heard of it. From, from an outsider's point of view, the, the most Australian, uh, most American menu item would be pizza. Or pie, but yeah, yeah. All right, that makes sense. What's the best way to eat potatoes? The what? Best way to eat potatoes. Mine is in a potato bake with like cream and cheese, French fries. Um, I really like home fries. That might be what I choose. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. You know what? Uh, we're gonna cut it here. We'll no, we move got, on. We've only got seven left. And that's so out. many. many. Let's, let's do some that's of the after show. Many. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's continue in the after show. All right. All right. So I want to thank our patrons. I especially want to thank our F clamp level, uh, the top level, Brent Jarvis, clean cut woodworking. Thank you very much, Brent. Um, but I want to thank every one of them. Without you guys, it would not be possible to continue doing this show. As much as people think that podcasting is free, it's not. So I want to say thank you to you guys. I if you guys want to, if anyone uh, wants to sign up for Patreon, you can uh, go to Patreon.com/clamp. You'll get access to the pre-show, the after-show, and sometimes we put other exclusive content. You also will get a custom or a numbered, sorry, a numbered uh, keychain, leather keychain made by uh, Morley. Um, Brent, I'm working you, on yours. It's been sidelined a little by the notebooks, but it's in the works. Don't worry. <laughs> and if you uh, 
if you can't support us, I completely understand. We appreciate if you want to give us a share, if you want to give us, leave us a review. Um, you know, if you just want to go and you're listening to this right now and you don't subscribe to us on YouTube, head on over to there, hit the subscribe button. I don't care if you watch or not. We just want to try and get to the hundred. Um, so if everyone who listens went over there and subscribed, we'd be at a hundred by now. Um, so if we'd really appreciate if you did that. Um, and yeah, and you know, thank you very much. And now clan and- Oh, nope. And speaking Morley. of. Speaking of Brent, our newest F Clamp level patron, <laughs> he left us a really nice review this week. Um, and because it's really great and I don't want to butcher it and I am not in the mental state to try to put on a New Orleans accent, I'm just going to read it because it's really nice. No, no, you have to put on the New Orleans accent. Yeah, what are, I don't how even, they, honestly, they get reviews? How do you get a cop out? Honestly, I don't even I don't even know what to do with that. I didn't I didn't have a chance to look it up. I'm just want I want to give it justice because uh, it was really nice. So it's five stars. It says don't get Think fooled. Think about Gambit from X Men. I don't even know who that is. These guys are freaking hilarious. And if you're expecting to have adult relations with them right off the bat, give it twelve months. Don't be fooled that you're not going to be entertained. They speak the words that so many of us are trying to say, but just can't get it out in words. I'm so happy I was able to find the podcast. And if you're wondering if it's worth a listen, do not hesitate. I'm impressed, and the entertainment is enough to become a patron for them. Money well spent on hours of entertainment, and they really do take time out of their lives to bring this podcast to us. Keep up the amazing gar- work, guys, from Brent Jarvis, United States of America. Thank you, Brent. Your keychain is on Thank the you, line. Brent. Yes, thank you. All right. Clamp and now, Clamp Mendations. So this <laughs> week, instead of doing a Clamp Mendation of a, uh, a video or thing that whatever you wanted to, we're going to be doing your favorite brand of alcoholic beverage um, because we've been talking about beer bottle caps this, from beer bottle caps this whole time. So Morley, why don't you let us know what your favorite beverage and brand is? I've been really enjoying uh, this hard cider recently called Don't Poke the Bear. It's D apostrophe O-N-T, Poke the Bear. Um, it's just really nice. It's not too sweet. It's not too dry. Um it's also not like crazy overpowered. So like you have a can and, and you're feeling good, but not too good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, I like all sorts of drinks, but this is just one that I've been enjoying recently. Hmm. Well, how about you, Adam? Okay. So my favorite alcoholic beverage is Johnny Walker, preferably mm-hmm. blue label, but any, any of the uh, colors. Um, Beer wise, my favorite is Coors. All right, <laughs> Grant shakes his head. <laughs> yeah, like it's there's nothing wrong with it. It just can't be a favorite. I just like it's a it's fine. Drink all the Coors you want. It's just not a favorite beer. I just don't understand that being your favorite. It is like bland, fine. It's just I don't know. It's like saying my favorite. My favorite is vanilla. And I just go, why is your favorite thing vanilla? That is so vanilla of you. Vanilla really got the short end of the stick because like it is a legitimate flavor, but now it's just called plain. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's a good flavor. Don't don't hate on vanilla. I will. Uh, don't tell me what to do. I, don't I like it's been called plain. Yeah it is. Yeah, um yeah. I like beer and uh, I don't really have <laughs> – so I don't really have like a favorite brand. There's lots of brands that I like and enjoy. Um, I drink a lot of Landshark, but it's probably not my favorite. I do like getting free T-shirts. So that's what I mainly focus my beer buying on. Um, I like lagers um, and pilsners. Those are more of my uh, style, which – but I also like – IPAs. I just find with IPAs, I can only have like a few of them before I feel like I need to switch to a different type of beer. Um, I like stouts. I like bitters. I like I like it all, really. I, when it comes to beer, except for sours, I don't like sours. They're gross. Don't drink sour beer. It's gross. Eden Eden loves sours. I'm kind of yeah. like I like them from time to time, but I, I wouldn't have them every day. Well, I wouldn't have them ever. I also like cider. I used to drink cider so much. I lost a lot of weight switching from beer to cider, 
But uh, then I switched back to beer and gained it all back. Um, so if I had to pick a favorite beer, and everyone's going to say, oh, it's overrated. But like, if I go to a restaurant and I see Stella on tap, I know it's going to be really good. Stella. Fair. I had a whole conversation with uh, Yves from Yif from uh, Projects and Things about Stella. Yes. And he was like, yeah, it's a solid beer. Don't hate on Stella. Yeah. So I think he lives close enough to the, where they originally brewed it or something. Yeah. So out of curiosity, favorite, um, what's, what's it called? Like scotch or whatever. Not, not a brand. Just if you had to pick one. Well, not, I don't really like scotch. Isn't really my thing because I've kind of been ruined on scotch. Cause there's a grants scotch and people buy it for me and it's not very good. It's like a low. <laughs> no, but I, that's what I mean though. Like, like your favorite like scotch, scotch, bourbon, whiskey. Okay. Whiskey Morning. is the term that, that covers it all. Uh, yeah, I like Canadian whiskey. Okay, I like cool. Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark is good. All right. Your hair's great. Uh, well, I thought <laughs> you, I guess you already said Johnny Walker. Right. Yeah, I've already called. You were last. Right. Okay, I'm very sorry. I was like waiting for you to say what your favorite wa- whiskey was. <laughs> Besides Johnny Walker, what's your second favorite? Uh, Jack Daniels. Interesting. Oh, actually, no, 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 sorry. Sorry, Canadian Club. Canadian Club, interesting. One of our yeah. very lowest level. Um, <laughs> I like it because it tastes I'm, like ginger beer. Interesting. It's like an alcoholic ginger beer. We have, um, I don't know if you guys have it there, but here we have Mon- like Monster, the brand. They have a, um, a monster that tastes just like Canadian Club, but non-alcoholic, hmm. and it's an energy drink, and I'm obsessed. It's very bad for me. It's it does sugary. sound bad. Yes. Well, on that note, I want to thank TF Turning for the use of uh, the theme song. And uh, and I want to say, if you want to find us anywhere, you can search Clamp. And just search Clamp. And it'll probably come. And then and then it won't you won't find us. So then you'll search Clamp Podcast, and that still won't work. And it'll be redundant because the P in podcast. But if you search Clamp Morley Adam Grant... You'll probably find us places. And I want to say thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And until next time. Yeah, this was fun. Cheers. When in doubt, you can find us in your hearts. Yeah. And we're going to go listen to, we're going to go listen to Morley's sexy dream about me in the after show. That's very sexy. Yeah. Bye. Bye. my crotch out of view. <laughs> <laughs>